Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take this subgroup Q that we found in a previous video of GL2C, and first we'll find a normal subgroup that has order 2, and then we'll determine if Q modulo that normal subgroup is isomorphic to a cyclic group of order 4. So first, the normal subgroup of order 2. Well, if it has order 2, then it's the identity element and one other element. Okay, so our n has to look like the identity and something else. And that something else has to have order 2. Yeah. So there weren't so many elements of order 2 in our group. Right? The identity has order 1. The negative of the identity, when we squared that, we got the identity. So that's order 2. But then all the rest of these we saw had order 4, right? r to the 4th was 4, but r squared was negative the identity. Right? r to the 4th was the identity, r squared is negative the identity, and negative r will have the same property. All of these, in fact, had order 4. So the only element of order 2 in Q is negative the identity. So that's actually what our n has to be. Fine. That does form a subgroup. Right? You can check, of course, the inverse of negative i is negative i, uh, and multiplying these together, you won't leave the set, so we really do get a subgroup. Why is it normal? Well, we know it's normal because, in fact, this is even a central subgroup. Right? If you take anything, let's say you took r, and you multiplied it by, well, certainly by the identity, that's going to be the same as i times r. But even if you do times negative i, That'll give you negative r, which is also the same thing as negative i times r. So in fact, i and negative i commute with everything in Q. So let's say you took, say, a negative i and you conjugated it by something else uh, in, uh, in Q, then what would happen? You'd end up with, well, the negative i commutes to the beginning, and you have a, a inverse. This is the identity again, so this is just negative i, which is certainly in our subgroup n. So n is in fact a normal subgroup of, of q. Okay, and it has order 2. All right, now we can try to look at the quotient group. And the way we can do this very easily is to, well, let's just write out the elements of the quotient. So you know the, the quotient is going to consist of cosets, right? It's going to look like something in Q times N. But N consists of the identity and minus the identity. So we'll do an example. Let's say I take the coset Rn. So this will be R times I, which is R, and R times minus I, which is minus R. So in fact, all these cosets are going to look like is one element in Q, and then the negative of that element. So we could write it down like this. You have, for instance, I and minus I, or R and minus R, S minus S, T minus T. So this, that's all the elements of Q, but we break them up into the cosets. So this would just be N, this would be RN, SN, and TN. So those are our four elements. Right? These are the four elements in Q mod N. Now the question is whether or not this is isomorphic to a cyclic group of order 4. Well, if it is, then there must be an element of order 4. So we need to work out what the orders of these elements are. Now N is just the identity element in the quotient, so that has order 1. What about Rn? Well, let's see. If you square Rn... This would be the same thing as r squared n. And we know that r squared is equal to negative the identity. But negative the identity is an element of n. So this is just equal to n. So in fact, the order of rn is 2, not 4. So that's order 2. But the exact same arguments will show that sn and tn also have order 2. So in fact, there is no element of order 4 in q mod n. And so it must not be the cyclic group of order 4. In fact, it must be the other group of order 4, namely the Klein 4 group.